Same thing that they came out of the bubble with. Defensive-oriented team. I think that's going to be their staple once again. Uh, tonight was a, a little sloppy until the you know, third quarter when they got a defensive unit in there. And they were able to uh, you know, slow Phoenix down, hold up to 40% shooting. But you know, I see a team that's on another mission. They added some players that's going to enhance what they already had. And uh, so I see a defensive-oriented team that has a lot of offense to go with it. Um, I feel like we, you know, we learned for sure that this team's, I, I think their chemistry, their camaraderie, like those things have carried over, right? Like you don't see a lot of uh, ego and guys still feeling territorial about, oh, yeah, I was on the championship team last year, so you shouldn't necessarily get these minutes or this opportunity. Uh, a guy like THT stepping into his opportunities in that way, that's part of the culture that's been created. Like, this is for everybody. And if you go out and perform and you do the things and, and show the habits that we practice, you'll get a chance to play. Uh, so it, that's, that's what I've seen in, in this preseason. Like, the culture that uh, since LeBron joined, uh, that they've been working to build in the front office, Anthony Davis, Frank Vogel, great additions. Um, they're in a really good spot. Uh, and so it's really just a matter of doing the day-to-day -day -day work and, uh, you know, staying in love with that process of being great. Deep team as well. We learned that. All right, Anthony Davis scored 19 of his 35 in the third quarter. Let's hear from ADs with Mike Trudell. All right, Anthony Davis, uh, six for seven from three, man. Uh, you know, that, uh, I don't know if you're supposed to be shooting that efficiently from downtown. What's going on with the stroke this preseason? <laughs> um, just trying to get back in the rhythm, you know, find my game. You know, coach wants me to shoot more threes, and why not, you know, get used to it in the preseason and get the shots up. So uh, that's all it was. Just trying to find a rhythm and just be confident in my shot, be confident in the game, and, and you know, work on my game in the preseason games before we get started. You know, first half reminded me, A.D., of early in the bubble when you guys were mostly thinking about trying to stay healthy, but those competitive juices seem to come out. The defense picks up a level in the third quarter. Uh, is that what happened to turn things around, even though it was a preseason game? Yeah, I mean, anytime we go out there and play, we want to work on good habits, work on our game. And, um, you know, the thing that we can do is control how we play on defense. And, you know, Coach got us on about our defensive intensity at half. And uh, we closed the first quarter and the second quarter pretty good. Um, First quarter they had, I think, 39 points. And, you know, we, we held them to, I think, 20-something in the second quarter and then played a great defensive half in the, in the second half. So um, we want to continue to work on our defense and, and be a dominant defensive team like we were last year. And, you know, it starts in the preseason. We got new guys, so it's gonna, we're going to continue to figure each other out and find ways that we can be better than we were last year. Yeah, you mentioned the defense last year. That was a big thing that carried you to the championship. How different is this team? And I know it's tricky to judge after the preseason games, AD, yeah. but how are you feeling about the way things are coming together heading into the opener? Um, we feel good. We feel very good. Uh, the things we were able to do on the defensive end um, so quickly with our new guys is, um, you know, it involves a lot of trust. Um, it involves a lot of uh, the new guys caring about playing defense and about it's about our, our schemes. And, uh, you know, Coach complimented us on how well we're gelling together on the defensive end, doing things that, uh, you know, we want, we, we're really not supposed to be doing this early. Um, and we got a lot of great cerebral players, uh, you know, Mark West, <clears throat> you know, that we picked up. So Trez, you know, and, and we've been able to do some things that necessarily you probably wouldn't be able to do last year. But, um, you know, two totally different teams, both teams defensive minded. Uh, so we just take it team by team and try to figure out ways that we can be great at, on the defensive end. But um, I feel good about our team, you know, going to our home opener, um, you know, play two. You know, the Clippers twice and Phoenix twice and uh, saw two totally different teams and we we're able to, to win all four. But uh, even though we feel good about where we are, we still have a long way to go. And then last thing for you, A.D., real quick, Chicago kid, uh, Taylor Horton Tucker, you got that blood that runs deep there in the state of Illinois. Uh, what would you think of his preseason and how does that help you going into the regular Man, season? He, he, he played his ass off. I mean, he's been great from day one. Um, even in the bubble, you know, last year he's been great for us, and he's a kid who wants to learn, a kid who wants to go out there and compete and be in the and get thrown in the fire. You know, he doesn't shy away from matchups. He doesn't shy away from big moments. Um, he listens, 
and and that's all you can ask for from a guy who uh, is a young player. And for him to come in and play with so much confidence and do good things for us on defense and on the offensive end is, is huge for us. And he's going to be a big role for us this year. Um, and he's continuing to learn. I mean, this is, you know, second year, and, you know, he's still learning the game. So, uh, you know, the, the, the future is bright for him for sure. Thanks, Eddie, man. We appreciate the time. Yeah, thanks, Mike. All right, appreciate that, uh, Mike and Anthony Davis. AD and LeBron in their final tune-up. They get extended minutes. Uh, LeBron plays 25. He ends up with 20. But I want to talk about Anthony Davis, guys. He is game ready, uh, and it showed in that third quarter. He had 19 of his 35 in that third. He was 6 of 7 for 3 overall, 4 of 5 in that third quarter, and just 30 minutes, 35 points fish. Yes, efficient. Um... You know, still really wanted to try and figure out how to win this game. Like, I, I don't think they felt like the world was going to end, obviously, if they did it. Um, talked about Frank Vogel really getting on them at halftime about their lack of defensive intensity. And that's really what seemed to turn them on. Like, when, as they started to, to really lock in defensively, the Suns scored 39 points in the first quarter, finished with 113, 74 points the rest of the game. And so this Lakers team, anchored by Anthony Davis in the middle defensively, we're going to talk about the 35 points for sure. But I, I think he still has that defensive player of the year mentality, mm -hmm. and that's going to be a good thing for this team to hang their hat on. And, and big game, we saw it last year when this team was at their best. It was AD blocking shots, Lakers getting out in transition. AD not only dominated around the basket, but stepping out <clears> in his <throat> ability to hit the mid-range and to hit the threes. We saw it all on display there in that third quarter. Good sign that when he wants to turn it on, and insert his will, he can, and, and the Lakers follow. No question. Three blocks tonight, and I saw uh, several plays where guys had layups. Uh, they didn't even attempt them because he was around. So uh, he has that, that presence. You know he's there. And that de defensive unit they had out there in the third quarter looked really good. I'm sure that's something Vogel looked at. Kuz, Caruso, AD, I think Montrez was out there. And they did a good job of, uh, you know, getting steals and getting out and getting them back in the ball game. So that's where it's going to happen for them. Their defense, you know, obviously always dictates what they do on the other end. All right, let's get to the highlights. We'll get you out to Phoenix. Spurt there to get to within 13. They were down 20 or so and not really playing that well on the defensive end, giving up to 69 points. 69-56. Time now to check in with the Access Sportsnet Studio. It's time for the Drug in the Box Halftime Report. Lakers a little sloppy in their final preseason game. James, 10 turnovers for 16 points for the Suns. Yeah, not what you want, but, you know, it is the last uh, game of the preseason. Phoenix Suns have a bunch of eager young players trying to uh, audition. Getting to 13 was good, though. We'll see what happens in the third. <clears throat> Yeah, they didn't feel like playing, basically, when the game, when the, <laughs> when the game, when the game started. And, uh, 20 seconds. They got right into the it as yes. the game went on a little bit more, so we'll see if they can come back in the third quarter and get it cracking. Speaking facts tonight, aren't you? Yes. Uh, Jack in the Box halftime report starts right after this. <laughs> three-peat. You were a part of a three-peat and back-to-back. -back. I want to start with you. How hard is that? Put this in perspective, please. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, uh, if my body could actually talk, it would explain <laughs> to you how difficult it is. Uh, it is challenging uh, physically and mentally. Uh, LeBron has done it before. Right? He's been in this position before. So it's good to have someone who's experienced the, the pressures, um, the, the demand that it takes on your body and your mind to be in a position to win a second championship in a row. Uh, but I do believe this team is constructed uh, as best as possible to make a run and win in another championship. Fish, I only uh, wrote about you guys winning back-to-back -back in 2009 and 10, and I was exhausted just, just writing about it. I mean, it, it, plus you went to the finals in 08 and, of course, lost to Boston. But what, what you did back in the day, really impressive. And, uh, James, I know you won a few championships as well, didn't you? You know, it's, uh, it's, it's not difficult. I mean, it is difficult. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> what is all now? A little, a little farty in there. It, it's difficult, especially when it's predicted. You know, all the GMs are, are predicting that the Lakers made the best moves. And uh, I think the, the one plus for them is that they, they're just coming off of a, uh, a championship win. And they have, as Fish said, one of the guys that's been there, done that. AD is, is bought in completely. And you have guys like Marcus All who's won. And uh, he wants to get one. And you have some... Uh, you know, some, some players who, who, who are hungry, 
uh, and, and want to win. So, yeah, I, I think they're favored. It continues to just show, too, the work that the front office put in during this short offseason to not just be complacent and, and understand what they needed to have all the necessary tools to repeat because of how tough you guys say it is. For sure. I, I think we've all learned how quick that window closes in mm -hmm. sports now. Uh, it is difficult to sustain the level of excellence it takes to win two, three, four, five championships in a six or seven year period. Uh, and so the Lakers are striking now while they have LeBron James, while they have Anthony Davis, uh, et cetera. But uh, this is a different time also with one of the most challenging aspects from my perspective is all of the fanfare and your family and the celebratory aspect of you guys are the champions. Everybody's telling you how good you are. And just due to the world we're living in right now, they're not experiencing that as much, right? A little bit of that is kind of taken away. Mm -hmm. We're all in a much more just humble, real mm -hmm. place. And I think that could help them to just keep focused on the work part of this and not walking around town because we can't walk around town, uh -huh. right. you know, acting like right. I'm the man, just focusing on playing basketball, my family and staying healthy. Speaking of the current player, as we know, who has done it, as you mentioned, LeBron James has been a part of a repeat before. And he said it's the hardest part about winning this title last season is that his teammates don't get to fully experience what it's like to be a champion. But when you look at these uh, numbers for LeBron. He leads in a couple of individual categories. Best small forward, best passer, second in opposing coaches making adjustments because of him. Number one, take a guess, mm. James Harden. Mm -hmm. uh, but year 18, big game. We talk about it all the time. LeBron James approaching 36 continues to earn that all around respect. It, it, it didn't and doesn't happen by accident. I mean, he had a formula years and years ago. I'm sure he's, you know, changed it a little bit and, and, and gotten better and better. He's disciplined, you know, disciplined, committed, and, uh, you know, he's...